Hey, how you doing? Good morning, everyone. My name is Jeff Thomas Black. I'm a native Oregonian and a victim's right advocate for the Elephants family, uh, whom I've grown to love dearly. Um, I want to recognize a couple folks that are here today that help the community of Portland fight back against police brutality and police violence. Uh, number one, I'd like to thank the folks that are cop watchers here. I see Eli Ritchie, uh, I see Chris uh, I see Bob West is over here somewhere, Keith Davis, uh, who am I forgetting? I'm forgetting, uh, I don't know, we got the guys. But anyway, the challenge here is that the cop watchers are people that keep us safe. When the camera's on, the police behave. This is a fact. So what we have going on right now in Portland is a cover-up, is a cover-up, and the first line of battle is the cop watchers. You're going to see Eli Ritchie a friend of mine, a dear friend, my brother, who is being persecuted by the city of Portland for filming police legally, including the police chief, who by statute is on duty 24-7-365. Okay, so as a public, one of the reasons we need to be here today is that unless we come together, the city of Portland wins. Okay, the police win. And unfortunately, the city of Portland we live in, we love the police, we employ with our tax dollars, do not act in our interest. They act in their own interests. They do not act in the interest of justice. They act in the interest of the police. It's a cabal, it's a gang, and it needs to be busted. Ted Wheeler is a useless police commissioner, which is worse than having no police commissioner at all. Okay? Chief Outlaw is from Oakland PD. We know nothing about her except for the fact that she worked in a very, very crooked department for a very long time came out seemingly unscathed to Portland, Oregon, and now we have Chief Outlaw. So our question to Chief Outlaw and Ted Wheeler today will be, what are you going to do to stop the police from killing Oregonians now? Not tomorrow, not this afternoon, right now. say something to the police themselves. From me personally and from a lot of my friends, I know there are good cops out here. I know there are good cops in Portland and Oregon that took this job that care about public safety, about children, about women, about schools, about our homeless people. I know those cops are there. As my friend Andrew Stroth will tell you in a minute, we know they are afraid too. So I want to say on behalf of, of the people that I work with for civil rights. We stand with you, good cops. Find us. We stand with you. You stand with us. This bullshit ends now. Okay, at this point, I would like to introduce a dear friend, a man that I invited to come to Oregon and help us, Mr. Andrew Stroke, attorney from the city of Chicago. Andrew, thank you, sir. My name is Andrew M. Stroke. I'm a civil rights attorney and the Managing Director of Action Injury Law Group, which is a Chicago-based civil rights firm that handles cases across the country to unjustify police violence. We are here today with the family of John Elephants. Barbara is here, Stormy is here, the family is here, 
Also joining us today is our local counsel, Tim Volpert, as well as Ginger Skinner, another lawyer in Portland that's going to be working with us. On April 7, 2018, at approximately 8 p.m., John Elifritz was inside City Team Ministries shelter experiencing a mental health crisis when eight officers stormed into the homeless shelter with their assault rifles and weapons drawn and a police trained AK, A9, K9 dog. Within seconds, these officers with a military style approach and weapons out and without cause or provocation shot and killed John Elephants. Within those seconds, Barbara lost the love of her life and her best friend. Within those seconds, 12-year-old Stormy lost her father. Within those seconds, David and Jeff lost their brother. Last night, the Elephants family filed a federal civil rights section 1983 lawsuit against the city of Portland and the officers involved in this tragic, unjustified and unconstitutional shooting. Yes, sir. As the De United States Department of Justice documented in 2012, the PPB, the Portland Police Bureau, has engaged and continues to engage in a pattern and practice of unjustified police shootings involving those suffering mental health crisis. From 2006 to present, the Portland Police Bureau has continued to violate the civil rights of people like John Elephants who are experiencing a mental health crisis. And those of us who are not That's right. And today they are brutal regular civilians as well. Thank you. So what I want to say is I want to, I want to say some names. I'm from Chicago. I don't know these names. I've been fortunate to be representing the Elephants family today. But let me just say some names. James Chase, Aaron Campbell, Jack Dale Collins, Keaton Otis, Daryl Ferguson, Thomas Higginbotham, William Monroe. Sorry, would you slow down just a second? Sorry. Sure. James Chase, Aaron Campbell, Jack Dale Collins, Keaton Otis, Daryl Ferguson, Thomas Higginbotham, William Monroe, Bradley Morgan, Billy Wayne Sims, Merle Hatch, Santiago Cisneros, Kelly Shabada, Nick Davis, Christopher Healy, Michael Harrison, Alan Ballou, David Jameis Ellis, Michael Johnson, Stephen Liffle, Kwanis Hayes, Terrell Johnson, Chase Peoples, Sarah Michelle Brown, and many others. Kendra James, Deontay Keller, Christopher Kalonji, Christopher Kalonji, it's Odie amazing. Phelps. It's amazing to me that a city in Portland is supposed to be one of the most livable cities in America that attracts tourism and businesses and people are killing folks on these streets. The question is, when is enough and enough? And when will leadership, when will Ted Wheeler, when will Chief Outlaw, when will the City Corporation Council address the issues identified by the United States Department of Justice? While there is a settlement agreement in place, and while there's been audits, and while even today City Council is meeting and having discussions, the reality is individuals continue to die in these streets. 12-year-old Stormy, will never see her father again. And it's because of the unjustified and unconstitutional actions of the Portland Police Bureau. Today we're here because the Elephants family stands here in pursuit of justice. And what does justice constitute? What, it, what, it, what that means is an independent, transparent investigation and holding the city of Portland accountable for the tragic death of John Elephants and other victims of the Portland Police Bureau. And what I've seen as a systemic failure to address the findings of the United States Department of Justice. The family demands justice. And now uh, I'm grateful to bring Barbara to talk about, about John. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody for being here this morning. 
I knew John for the last 17 and a half years. And I was lucky enough to spend the last four months with him before he killed me. There is nothing, nothing that I can do that's going to bring him back. But if we all stand together, maybe another family won't have to go through this. And that's what we want. That's all I got. I know there are some many friends here that would like to come up and stand behind us, and we invite you to do that now. Stand with us, please, anyone. We will, uh, we will take a few questions. I think if you want a copy of the lawsuit, um, it's, it's electronic. We can send you the lawsuit. Uh, the lawsuit speaks for itself, um, and we'll take any questions that any of you may have. Can you just tell us, are you asking for any monetary damages? What, what are you asking for in the I mean, lawsuit? At this stage, we, we just filed the lawsuit last night. We will serve the city. We will go through the discovery process. This lawsuit is about reform. And what's amazing to me is you have a Department of Justice report, you have a settlement agreement in place, and you have a city and police department that, from our view, hasn't changed. So as far as monetary relief, I mean, we'll go through the process. We want to change in the PPB. I'm going. We're still waiting for discovery. The city is going to be showing us additional videos. I mean, we need to see all the evidence. There were several witnesses. There was a lot of video. And from our perspective, the PPB militarized and not and did not de-escalate a situation of a person in mental health crisis. And the primary foundation of the Department of Justice report was the failure by PPB officers to to deal in situations involving folks experiencing mental health trauma or crisis. We'll go through the process. We'll see. I got some, I got a couple of videos of them calling Sir out on mental health crisis. Uh, if you plan on addressing that, you know, we're here today on behalf of the Elephants family, and we're going to focus on this case. But we think this case can have implications far beyond just this case. Yes, ma'am. So please, no, so please talk to Jeff. We want to talk to all witnesses. And I have something to say for myself. I came to Portland to try to get justice against the sexual abuser that I was married to and who committed pedophilia against my children. And the police department refuses to take an active report and they banned me from going there to get justice. And they have refused to release any records at $30 apiece. They have thwarted and thwarted and thwarted justice. Oh, God. Thank you very much. Um, can any of yes. the family, if they feel like it, just tell us a little bit about John? None of us know anything except for what happened that day. Uh, well, we're not going to talk about the actual day. But, yeah, uh, we Barbara, just want to know something about him, his personality. Or... Barbara's asked me to, to share some words about John. Uh, Barbara and I have talked a lot. I think we met the day after John was killed. Uh, John was known as a big teddy bear. John was kind of the neighborhood dad. If kids had trouble at home, they'd go over to Barb and John's house. They'd make sure they called their parents. They'd make sure that their parents knew where they were, what they were doing, and that they were safe and would be home. John helped kids fix bikes, cars. He was a wonderful stepfather uh, to uh, his stepson and his stepdaughter. Uh, he was a wonderful father to Stormy, 12. I know Stormy misses him every day and one of the first things she told me when we met was that she didn't want this to happen to anybody else's father and that she wanted to grow up to fight for this cause. She's a remarkable young girl. John had challenges in his life. John spent time um, as a very young man in, in confusion, as many young men do. But he was a wonderful father, a wonderful member of the community that was valued, loved uh, across this city. He was a, he was a native... Portlander, he was here, his life, his family, his friends, 
John is missed. John Elifritz was a life that mattered. John Elifritz was a father, a husband, a son, a stepfather, a papa to his grandbaby who misses him terribly. John Elifritz was a life worth living. John <coughs> Elifritz was a life worth saving. Portland police failed us. Um, can you just tell me, is Barbara and Stormy's last name also Elifritz? Just yes. we, okay. Thank I you. Have, uh, um, I need, I need to talk to you. I have uh, footage of John, some video, and I'd like to show it to you after this. Uh, my name is Jeff Black. I live here in Portland. I am the media contact on the press release and anybody that needs to talk to either Andrew or the Elifritz family may contact me. I'll make the uh, appropriate arrangements with Tim Volpert, our local counsel, and with Andrew. Thank you. So, so any, again, any video that you have, sir, or anyone else, we want to gather all that information. Okay. We, videos speak a thousand words, right? So we, I, I was, yeah, video, I was John for Covenant Mentor for Central City Concern. I've seen how good John really did. I have some video of him. He shot me Marco Polo's every week after he graduated and left the program and got home with his wife and kid, his daughter. And uh, you can see all that video. It's just a segment, though, that I think you'll be very interested in. It's probably about 30 seconds. Good. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for coming today. Appreciate it. Thank you. Because they up to no good, fucking dirty cops. Wanna slam me on the hood, dirty cops. Try to rob me for my rights, but I know I know my rights, I know, I know, I know, I know Cause they up to no good, fucking dirty cops Wanna slam me on the hood, dirty cops Try to rob me for my rights, but